Welcome to the Mentality Metaverse. We seek to move the whole self in, through, and beyond the present state of things. Join us on our mission to make a metaverse that's safe, creative, and geared to ever-evolving good. Mentality Metaverse provides AR, VR, XR, and more to benefit everyone in our present reality. Besides, why be better at games when we can better overall? Mentality Metaverse to bring out your best. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. How are you? And good afternoon and good evening to the people all around the world. It's a pleasure to have you. And, Thank right. you. Today is day two, and we're going to get started. Uh, it's uh, just about time. Uh, quick recap from yesterday. We had Clayton Banks uh, from Harvard University, Columbia University, and the CEO of Silicon Harlem. Um, and then we had Ivan Rabb from the NBA. He came on and spoke about sports enhancement. Then... Uh, Dr. Alex, you covered Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya's uh, Building a Meta Cloud for the Metaverse, after which we moved on to Dr. Adil Akhtar uh, from Psionics with his bionic uh, hand and things of the sort. Um, and then we moved on to Mustafa Sharari, former Oculus uh, designer, and uh, gave a very good and a good capsule presentation of how he saw the metaverse moving in a very purpose-driven way, as we, as we all of us do. And then the doctors, Charles Needham and Maria Needham, uh, with education in uh, virtual environments. And um, we closed out there. Um, and here Great. we are today, and uh, you have it today. Great, thank you. And, and today, uh, our focus, the, the we, day one, the conference, our focus was on health and mental wellness and the mentality of what could be the metaverse and how we can make it our own. And then on day two, the, the theme is more towards uh, commerce uh, and ESG, which is where we're going to spend a good amount of time today uh, using ESG as the underlying theme for technology on the metaverse. And we have some guest speakers uh, who are going to provide a perspective uh, from, the, from the industry on how we can uh, incorporate ESG, how we can be careful about the governing body that manages the ES, ESG ratings. And that those are some of the discussions we're going to have. Um, we have uh, experts today from different industries and we're trying to, uh, the, the goal of today's uh, session is trying to figure out how does how can we uh, bring in that sustainable social governance while using NFTs and, and cryptocurrency and other uh, types of uh, monetization on the metaverse and how to somehow manage that relationship uh, in a blockchain decentralized way. We're already halfway down in decentralization. We are in distributed, which is very close to decentral. So th those are the type of conversations we're going to have. And then an another part of the metaverse is innovation, creativity, design. How do we foster those uh, energies in the, in the metaverse? And we have uh, an inventor who's invented uh, and came up with ideas. So we're going to uh, share some of those inventions. Uh, we're gonna hide some of the proprietary piece of the inventions. We're gonna talk about some of those inventions. We also have the uh, IP law firm who, who does patents, copyrights and trademarks. And they're gonna come in and talk about uh, the inventor's toolbox and, and how we can move forward with uh, doing innovation and protecting the IP on the metaverse. Um, and then we close out with um, uh, a human resources, how the metaverse could be used for training, for, uh, for mental health wellness, for performance improvements, how we can incorporate uh, the metaverse um, in the enterprise, uh, in the HRMS systems 
uh, and enterprise systems. And all the, the, the members of this panel will be in and out talking about different uh, ideas and we will call them in as we, as we uh, formulate. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first topic we want to cover is the ESG in the metaverse. So let me bring up a slide so that you can see uh, what that, how does the ESG look in the, in the metaverse? Uh, so let me bring that up. It's high. just like going kosher or going green, this ESG has been incorporated as a rating. And uh, here, let me just quickly show you a, a company. You take any company, it's going to be rated in this fashion in a consistent way across different industries. And and uh, I feel that the metaverse needs something like the ESG, Dr. J, uh, because without the ESG, you cannot have a responsible uh, system, a, a system that is self-governed and self-managed. The, the conversation now is how do we create a system that is self-governed and self-managed by a distributed blockchain environment. And that's where I think uh, Mr. Ong can just talk maybe briefly about what he thinks. He's an activist and he's also, uh, he's been in the corporate world. He's an accountant. So he has a different mindset. He's, a, he's, a, he's an accountant, he has auditing type mindset. So maybe it's good to hear it from that side on how this policy making in the metaverse uh, can fit in. So, uh, Mr. Ong, do you uh, can you talk briefly about what you think how this ESG can be incorporated into maybe the metaverse or even into another social media system? Or uh, how do you see that? Hi, everyone. I I, I, know, I know Alex is going to drag me in because I have no intention of really talking. But um, anyways, I uh, uh, I I am I'm. Uh, not exactly a tree hugger, but I'm sort of a tree hugger um, uh, and, a, and a, an IT person also. But um, I, I just think that, um, you know, you, you, you need uh, ESG is the, uh, um, something that is, uh, is something everybody needs to consider in every aspect of business. Um, but uh, I think that the best thing that um, you can use Metaverse for is to, as an educational channel, um, just as an example, um, I think most of us um, are very much climate aware. Um, we know things, but we don't know how to put it into uh, something that we can actually help and do. Uh, I can imagine just as an example, um, say in your metaverse, we teach the kids and the adults and all the whole spectrum how to do composting, for example, or what to recycle or what not to recycle. Uh, those are the kinds of things that I was just thinking about. Alex, back to you. Thank you. Dr. J, your thoughts on that? I would like to um, underscore some of the things you said about systems. Um, one of our former presidents, President Bill Clinton, said societies that thrive are those that incorporate systems and with systems uh, we have uh, disciplines and the great Reginald L. Lewis uh, the attorney um, Harvard attorney and benefactor for the Reginald L. Lewis um, uh, law library in Harvard uh, stated that um, he was able to go from one institution the institution of law and to other institutions at TLC Beatrice, which he built to be a big food conglomerate. Um, by understanding the discipline of institutions, uh, every institution has its disciplines and understanding the methods by which the disciplines of one institution is incorporated, then it can also be transferred to other institutions. So here we are with the uh, mentality metaverse, uh, which is an institution and the disciplines, the systems uh, that were applicable, that are applicable to other institutions, so too are duplicable and applicable here. 
Great, thank you, uh, Dr. J. So uh, one of the questions that uh, we have, Ken, is on the calculating the ratings and who, who is that governing body? Would this be shareholders in the company, investors? Uh, how, does, how do we make sure that the, the ratings are uh, fair and de decentralized in a way that it does not get corrupted? Uh, since you're an activist, do, do you see how uh, these ratings uh, can be done in a, in a fair way? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, we have systems like, um, you know, we, we have, um, I mean, you know, everybody's quite familiar with their uh, SEC and, you know, SEC is the governing board for uh, financial, you know, uh, uh, environment in the uh, uh, United States. Well, who, who writes reports for companies, um, accounting firms, they audit, uh, audit companies and and they write reports. So I, I think you need independent bodies like that who can go and audit, um, uh, you know, ESG ratings and submit them. Just like uh, I think it's uh, and and I think it behooves all the companies to hire these ESG auditors and and do a ESG audit. Really. So. So Ken, do you think this is similar to what you've been doing in the past with the, the consulting firms, uh, such as Sarbanes-Oxley Audit? Is this something similar to that? Is there any? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so that takes us to the next level, which is we, we are now, we looked at ESG. Now we're going to take a look at uh, policymaking and and how innovation is done and how USPTO uh, does the IP protection and, and trying to figure out when you make, how do you go from policy uh, to execution and how do you start you know, evolving and creating policies, right? And, and I think that is a, a very important topic and there, there is an uphill battle. <clears throat> And this is where I think uh, we can, I can share a, a story where uh, this is an inventor story. So we'll start with the inventor story. Uh, so I'm gonna share that in the screen. <clears throat> and there's some proprietary uh, technology and some innovations here, so which we have kind of ma masqueraded. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you the screen that we can. Here is three invent innovations, you know, very, simple but very practical innovations. And we're trying to figure out when we do some of these innovations, uh, how we can do these innovations in the meta metaverse to do A-B testing, to test it in the test market before we actually make the product. And so here's an invention. So she invented three, uh, three different products and services around it. So the first product was uh, something that uh, is to replace the care labels with QR code because she felt the care labels are a waste of resources. And how do you replace the care label? How do you take the care label out? And how do you put either uh, a QR code or uh, some other way to replace the care label? It's a simple idea. Every product has a care, uh, clothing has a care label. So how do you uh, transform that and go from a care label. How do you go to uh, something like uh, an RFID chip or maybe even a simple printed, very low cost QR code, right? That's ESG, you're saving. Uh, so what challenges did, did she face when she went against this, how to replace, right? This is a this is this is being done by every clothing manufacturer. It's 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 a it's a it's a requirement by the the federal law to have that label. But now that we have cell phones and we have ways to access information on the internet, why can't we just go with a QR code requirement? And so when we had our conversation regarding how and what the metaverse could be, one of her biggest concerns was policy from the governments. How do you get the traditional policies to adapt and to transform to be more effective? And that transition period, 
Um, and, and so that is the challenge, right? If in, in, a, in, a, in a traditional system, you need lobby, you need uh, to present it. Someone has to, you need a, a committee, a group, a nonprofit, uh, some activism. There's a lot of steps involved before you can replace a, an existing system. Um, and Dr. J, what, what advice do you have um, or what do you see? How do you see the metaverse helping with that? The QR code, uh, first and foremost, is more organic and it opens up to evolution. Um, that quick QR code could also lead to, in this particular manufacturing realm, other upsells, other features, future features, future um, buy-ins that people can do. And by extension with the metaverse, uh, these QR codes or other blockchain, uh, which would be built in, could enable individuals to develop an ongoing relationship by way of their brand loyalty or their brand choice. Uh, this particular brand is something that next year would have another model and into in the metaverse or in the real world and the metaverse and having a running way of uh, a, a running method, ongoing method for uh, communicating with the consumer. This would be a great way to see the product first to, beyond those first five critical years. Um, and for startups, it would be great for the metaverse to take that, but it's, it, it falls with inside new venture modeling strategies. Got it, got it. And, and within again, the metaverse. Think, yeah, and I think that is the, the key is you can test your ideas in the metaverse, have audience and have that traction. And then you can go ahead and start building that activism and building that policy making and, and lobbying. So that, that again, the, our next speaker is going to talk about uh, his company, how they actually did that. And they did a, a prototype to a client and he's gonna show a video clip of how they used AR VR to sell their product uh, to the client. So that, that's, a, that's a good way to think about it. Now, the, there's a lot of virtual clothing uh, in, the, in the metaverse. Uh, there's talks about a lot of virtual clothing. So in these virtual clothing, do we put care labels? And if we do, maybe this is a time where uh, seal her uh, strategy of removing care labels with QR codes and coming up with a ESG model or incorporating the ESG model as part of uh, her company. And sometimes your company does not have to be a for-profit company. You can still run, such as the Olympics or the NBA, uh, they're nonprofit, but they still run as a company. Dr. J, could you talk a little bit about that, uh, about how uh, the nonprofit company for business kind of, you know, think of it in that context? In a nonprofit organization, one of the uh, um, upshots is that you're able to help individuals and it does take funds to run it. And those funds that run it also help the, uh, the, the gatekeepers, the, the caregivers with inside of that nonprofit also uh, sustain themselves. Uh, with a nonprofit organization with inside of the metaverse, uh, I think that the stretch for the social good will be a draw as well. We've spoken uh, with inside of the description of the Mentality Metaverse Conference, how uh, the social aspect of climate change, sustainability, uh, quality of life for individuals, one and all on the planet, uh, factor in. So where nonprofit is concerned, I think that it disarms individuals even more to this to this uh, nuance, which is the metaverse as we know it today. Great, thank you. 
So um, that is one take I uh, have on your idea of the care label and how to perhaps fight that battle in the metaverse and take it into the real world. So there are two more ideas. It's, uh, it's very brief. Uh, one of it is really related to the metaverse. And one of that idea is uh, her idea of a smart bear. And her motivation for the smart bear was uh, deep rooted in, in that she wanted to tell a bedtime story to her son while she's away at work or doing something else. She wanted some kind of a, uh, uh, you know, a bedtime storytelling uh, uh, device remotely that she could manage. And that was that idea of the smart bear. And I think it fits very well with the metaverse because one of the things we're really doing with the metaverse is we're connecting real, virtual, and artificial. And somehow we're bridging that together. Um, so the, that is, uh, if, if um, it would, it, we, we didn't have time or we would have pre-recorded uh, her passion of uh, how she came about this and then how she wanted to donate these bear to hospitals for young children. Uh, the, 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 um, the upshot to that was it was a very uh, organic way to get technology in the hands of young children without any user interface, without the affordance is just natural, just talking to it. Think of it as as simple as putting a, a Alexa device inside of uh, the smart bear and that's it. You just turn it on and it works. And, and she was very concerned about safety, the heat, the implications and, and, and other uh, mentality concerns. And um, so this is something that you know she's working on and. Uh, I think testing the, the, your idea on the metaverse somehow and then bringing it back to a real world product uh, would, be, uh, would be something. Do you, uh, does uh, Ken or uh, anyone in the call have any other suggestions uh, or feedback? Please uh, go ahead. The uh, virtual clothing with inside of the metaverse is akin to uh, the wardrobes we see on the runways today. And then the next thing you know, there's a company that comes out with the same look that Dustin So had on, on the red carpet for an affordable price. Got it, got it. And, in the and, metaverse, you have this, you have these clothings and, and someone really likes it, it can be made available in the real world. Again, uh, a note to follow about mentality metaverse so for the audience, Dr. Alex is that we look to take from the metaverse to bring into the reality, not from the reality to be immersed and, and eventually consumed by the metaverse. Yes, yes. And, and saying that the, the third company was an authenticity company where uh, products are validated in the blockchain so that big brands can uh, uh, have an authenticity token that can be used for trading, for purchasing similar to the NFT. And this was thought about a while back in 2018. So, so but the uh, one of the, the things, Dr. J, since you have a physical product and you have a QR code on it and you sell uh, coins uh, from that, through that QR code as they consume your product, how do you see, what do you see the connection between brand and uh, this concept now of, having a coin, having a, a, just like a gift card, right? Having a cryptocurrency that keeps appreciating in value because the item is in limited quantity and you're managing that in a decentralized blockchain. Uh, th this authenticity type uh, model. So uh, what is your take on that? And when I mean, you did your launch, is there any advice for uh, I mean, on how she would go about doing this product? Uh, the physical product is total package energy. It's a nanotechnology driven energy uh, supplement line. There's also B12 and vitamin C of the type. Um, and our NFT is the mentality NFT, which helps um, for the mental health and well being of one and all. So, here, the tie in is that you have a virtual QR code on the uh, total package energy physical product which helps the body 
that is then melded with the mentality NFT that is for the mind. And then you have a holistic system that helps the mind as well as the body. And in so doing, you can track uh, your constituents in a way in which is purpose-driven and also uh, to their ultimate benefit. The amount of times that they consume the supplement, they have a small, they, they uh, accrue a small portion with inside of the mentality NFT and have, uh, they have access to the content within the NFT, the metadata with, within the NFT for their mental well being. So tying these two together this way uh, enables the individual to find a one-stop shop, if you mind, if you will, for the mind and the body. Great, thank you. And and that is one of the the, the key themes of this uh, whole uh, our, our our purpose is we want to be very purpose driven. We want to take from the metaverse and create real world actions. The mentality of creation. We can read about it, we can visualize it, but where is the execution? Where does, it, where does it, when does it hit the consumer in a very physical, actionable way? So now let's move into an actual product and how AR and VR was used in that manufacturing process. And then we'll continue on uh, with, the, uh, with the presentation. So right, thank Dr. You. Alex, on that, on that, I just wanted to say, because at, at the end of the day, it's all physical, regardless how much of the metaverse we utilize. Thank you. And, and then that, uh, you know, when we look at the QR code play, what we can also now think about is this metaverse is a geo play. If you can, when you QR code scan, you have time, date. Now you can incorporate the GPS location. So now you have a sense of where your consumer has consumed that content. So it's a matter of thinking in multi-dimensional ways of adding more depth to your uh, collection of data, the, the remote sensors collecting that data in that QR code. Okay, saying that, we are going to uh, now move to our next uh, focus. And the, the next focus is on, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the, uh, uh, we have uh, Naveen who is an IP lawyer. And this is a, was the, our motivation for inventing in the, in the metaverse is by going directly and working with USPTO, filing the uh, trademark, filing the copyright and doing it the right way, right? So let's, uh, uh, let me go through quickly the, the slide deck here and uh, we will uh, go ahead and open up to questions. So this is very fast. Okay, so it, as you all know, it takes, a good amount of energy to go from idea to investment. So if you look at our day one and, and looking at the speakers, you can see how they had this grand ocean view and then they had to focus it down to just one purposeful function and then get into investment. So that is the challenge for any inventor is how do I create a product? How do I create something that uh, that is uh, that that is not only uh, into you know that it has some novelty, but also has investment and growth, right? There's a lot of things involved: uh, licensing, copyright, franchising, trademarking. So uh, what we felt was that there is something that you could do, and we called it the the inventor's toolkit, where an idea is, as soon as you come up with an idea, before doing anything else, go for a, a search, a USPTO search, and look for your other competitors who are doing something like that. And when you do that, what you do is you get some other ideas. You get ideas of how others have done it, how you could do it, how you could evolve, because an invention is not a single monolithic uh, thing. It's a it's a collective, it's a collective, when, when an invention becomes reality or any kind of innovation becomes reality when it's collective and that one invention has 
layers of other inventions attached to it as addendums. And, and that helps you. That really helps your invention get to that next level. And that's what we, we push for is somehow trying to help you create, do the patent search, look for competitors and, and build that, uh, that deck that uh, the, as an inventor, you get so caught up with your idea, you get tunnel vision. So having someone else look at your invention, look at all the other inventions and help you provide an assessment document. Um, and then once you get that assessment document, you will have an idea how to approach your, uh, your invention. Do you, do, is, is it a research? Is it, is it uh, licensing? Is it a franchising? Is it a, a prototype? Do we create a minimum viable project? And eventually based on that, you can create your own pitch deck and then eventually build it up to a business. So we are taking this bottom up approach instead of coming up with an idea and then trying to launch it. We're thinking, let's look for, let's take our idea, see how many other folks have implemented it because we want to go from idea to execution. And if you look at most of these patent documents, it's geared towards execution. So it helps you build that, that, that mentality and framework. And from my personal experience, coming up with uh, ideas to prevent school shootings, if I went and did a, a patent search, and if I went and did an extensive research, about 90% of what I needed, I wouldn't have to build myself. I could have used a lot more patents and getting investors and getting this technology out in the market would have been much more easier than trying to do everything uh, myself. And that is what I want to bring uh, to the metaverses. You can collaborate and prototype and do your MVPs on the metaverse at a fraction of the cost than trying to go out there and trying to build your actual MVP. Think about virtual MVPs, virtual A-B testing, even having a virtual scenario where you could have a role play inside of the metaverse. And that is, is I, I think, the, the, the power of, uh, of this, this new medium is virtual prototyping and trying to get that, uh, that, trying to see where there is traction. Okay, saying that now, uh, that was uh, the, the take on the inventors platform. And this is a, just a quick, uh, for the sponsors, the, the IP Logicize, these are the things they do, and they do patent filings and everything else from a global market, from a global perspective. Uh, Naveen, you're on the call. Could you say what is the area, which countries are you working on with these patents at this time? So my name is Naveen, and I'm a patent prosecutor and litigator in India. And the company that Dr. Peter is talking about is Logicize IP, and we are, I mean, if we talk about the coverages in terms of filing and patent prosecution and trademark prosecution, we are almost covering all the major countries uh, in the world. So uh, let it be USA, Canada, Middle East, North America and South America, and also China and uh, Australia and New Zealand. So we are pretty much covering all the major jurisdictions and <clears throat> We uh, like Logicize IP is basically if we talk about uh, how this this I was I was listening to you guys and I was thinking how the IP is going to fit with the metaverse world. I mean, we have been doing this in real world for quite some time, and now the metaverse is no longer a thing that is going. To be uh, in future it's right now it's happening now so we need to understand that the the, the challenges that we have to uh, face in terms of implementing and enforcing the ip existing ip and future ips with the metaverse <clears throat> so if you talk about it uh it is kind of similarly enforceable in metaverse universe and real world so Let's say if somebody is using Nike's logo in their game in Metaverse and they, they are making money out of it, so Nike can sue them. Similarly, as in real world, uh, they, they can sue them and they can stop them from doing this. So that is, that is one thing that 
I would like to say, and the rest of the thing is uh, the uh, the yes, the logistics IP. So before going forward in a patent journey, helps an inventor to decide how he can make it profitable, how he can generate MVP, and uh, what challenges he has to face, and he he can be well prepared before. I mean, the prosecution and litigation starts. So, yes. Thank you, uh, Naveen. And it's very late for Naveen. He just came in. He's running the company. And one of the things I was very impressed, and I was a client of Logisize IP uh, for the uh, drone uh, patenting uh, project. So uh, when uh, I was working on the patent, this is the document. I drew a picture like this, and then I pasted an image like this, and then I wrote down the steps. This is all the three documents I provided to Logisize IP. And what they went ahead and did, they did an extensive patentability assessment report and they wrote the full patent with the diagrams and documents. It was so impressive that I felt, you know, th this is a company that, uh, that, that needs to be showcased and it needs to be a global company. They uh, really put a lot of time and effort uh, into their work, uh, and uh, that, and I felt that the IP companies uh, should also be uh, uh, should represent should be represented in the metaverse uh, because they are going to be the ones protecting some of the uh, the, the IPs on, in the metaverse. So thank you, uh, Naveed, for joining and uh, being a part of uh, everything we have done, and I thank you for putting together this invent uh, inventors toolkit and bringing the cost significantly lower and doing crowdsourcing and ICO initial coin offering in other ways to get your patent uh, done. So that way, if you have an idea, but you don't have any investment, somehow uh, using NFTs and other ways, uh, this can be done. And eventually, hopefully, this whole patenting process gets into a blockchain, and then it just gets kind of streamlined uh, from there. If anyone in the call, uh, I know some of you worked for the, the USPTO in, in, in very high leadership roles. If you feel like jumping in and talking a little bit about that, uh, I'm open. If not, we can move forward. Uh, so I'll just give you a minute to think about that. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go to the next presentation. Thank you, Naveen, and, and have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Peter. Let's uh, see. Okay, so again, uh, Dr. Uh, Rajput is here. Great. Uh, and we, we will get started at two o'clock on your presentation at this time. We have another entrepreneur, Yogesh, and I'm impressed with Yogesh for several reasons. One is he managed to get manufacturing and doing hardware and technology, and he managed to use um, what we call uh, AR with his client presentation. So I want to show you a, a video that he put for the client, and after that, he can talk about his journey. So let's go ahead and start with, uh, I'll share his video. It's, it's a very simple, brief video, but it's, it shows how you can use the, the metaverse for uh, prototyping okay, so, and, and showing clients. While client. we're still so on production, and here's like an AR, an AR for you, or how the look uh, is Can everyone see be the video? Pretty good. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so, okay. so you uh, Yogesh, it's all yours, excited. go ahead. Thank you. So thank you, uh, uh, Alexander. Thank you for introducing me. And yeah, uh, I'm the CEO and the director of Light Tree Technology India. We manufacture light therapy products. And uh, how I think that uh, Metaverse fits in the manufacturing domain is how we can showcase to our clients and we show the, in the virtual world because now there is a restriction. Now the COVID is here. Nobody can move it out. So this Metaverse play a vital role to connect with the people. So with the like people can share their innovation, right? Just like this design, we have made this light therapy bed. So light therapy like has a huge benefit. Huge benefit, it's helped to circulate your blood flow and you can say uh, it decrease inflammation, reduce back pain and increase eligible, uh, uh, viability and you can regenerate your whole body. And you know we we show this uh, that like a video, and we ask client to come in the in the in the video, and we show this prototype, and he was so impressed, 
and he he just want to place an order so you know how how this can play a vital role in terms of you can say sales and marketing so i think that's a, like a great idea we can we can evolve more into this and how we can help others and we can be just like i can show my company i can show i give a tour to my company and i i can show some prototype and maybe i can open it and i can show in the metaverse how it works and even on the virtual uh, you can say uh, avatars right i can use a virtual avatar to see okay how i can uh, uh, make that virtual avatar to lie down on the bed and how he will operate the bed right so these kind of experience to the client or the people uh, gives another level of satisfaction to start some project so this uh, this kind of things like and i am very big fan of innovation and new things so uh, i i uh, mr peter just discussed with me and so i i just get in started and jump in and i really like this idea and yeah so th that's it and we are, right now we are showing the light therapy bed to our client i yeah uh, and what, i, I what really, is the programming language that you use for these 3d modeling uh, so, uh, we're still on so right now we we use uh, you can say a pre developed software uh, and that we can bring it in the app uh, and we use stp file and when we do the video calls then we can show you. our prototype the best thing is uh, best thing is uh, alexander is the experience that uh, uh, people have when they see uh, with their eyes okay that's how going to product look like and that's give them a satisfaction right so okay we are moving ahead right and i i like your comment that you said that we are connecting real world and virtual world and the artificial so uh, so that's comment is uh, spot on in the metaverse thank you yogesh uh, thank you for your time and we look forward to hearing about your company and your ar in the, in the, in the upcoming times and we'll start putting it in the mentality newsletter so thank you again yeah. very good night thanks for your time like thank you, so much, thank you yogesh thank you, so thank you so much great so we we have about 10 more minutes before our next speaker uh, before that i want to cover is something that is um <clears throat> near and dear to me which is uh, gamification in the metaverse how to create uh, a kind of an environment where uh, the metaverse can be used uh, to learn uh, using a, a kind of a gamification model. So let me go ahead and bring that uh, and show you the, in this uh, diagram here, Facebook is building a, a glove type interface where uh, you're in two different locations, but you're seeing a virtual environment, you're seeing the hand and you're interacting. Right. This is kind of one of their biggest things is they're trying to invest in this sensory technology from both sides, trying to provide that that physical feel between the two uh, to uh, real people in a virtual environment. And and if you look at it, let's say, for instance, here. This interaction between two individuals in the virtual world and they're getting feedback, this haptic feedback is something that uh, you know they're, they're pushing for to get that feedback. And again, we don't even have the language, the vocabulary to talk about this technology, right? We don't know what that haptic feedback is. And is it air? Is it neural? Uh, it, it's very complicated. And this is where Dr. Uh, Bharat is going to talk tomorrow about quantum computing and how taste and smell requires a very complex uh, thinking. So that, that's where, uh, you know, the, the, the computation uh, that we need for the metaverse is not what we have now. So we may need a much more complex system. Okay, so from going from this, I just tested something out uh, in my uh, local uh, computer. And this is a very simple test. My daughter is holding a balloon and then a, a a small, uh, you can see right there, a horse virtually is placed in the, in the, on top. And as she moves the balloon, the physics uh, takes place and the, the horse is trying to slide and move. So you can see, even with a computer, just with a webcam, you can do this AR type uh, learning and you're immersing in a way, right? The balloon is real, my daughter is real, and she doesn't have any device in her hands. She's just watching a screen and that device in her hands is augmented within the screen. 
And that's a very interesting way to think about maybe a bridge between uh, not having an Oculus or not having an AR VR gear, but just having a computer. How would you build a, a metaverse experience uh, similar to this? Um, so that uh, just to give you some ideas, uh, think about uh, different uh, types of interaction that you could build uh, from a real world object in the uh, metaverse or virtual world, if you want to call it that. Um, and if you, it's engaging as well, for instance, if you click here, this particular uh, dragon is kind of interacting with her and she's kind of, you know, you see how where she's out here with just a pencil and the dragon is interacting with her. And this is where the, the concept of AR and, 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 and the AI and ML and object recognition and all those things kind of come into play uh, in, this, uh, in this small equation. And this product comes with Microsoft Windows 10. It's the Windows 3D library. So you can open up your Windows 10 and click on it. So even on a standard computer, uh, you can do this type of uh, kind of a hybrid VAR, right? It's not outside, it's inside, but you're inside. It takes you inside. It's kind of an interesting uh, twist. Okay, then the next one I want to show you is gaming. Most gamers have all kinds of gear. They're the ones who push this graphics, uh, this industry forward is the gamers. They have heavy gaming. And I wanted to play a small clip and show you how gameplay uh, kind of influences the metaverse. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me share um, this video. Um, <clears throat> stop sharing now. Now I'm going to share uh, and I'm going to scrub through this video so we don't have that much time, but I'll put this online for you to see. But we're going to scrub through this video just to show you some of the capabilities. Um, so if you, when, you, when you're looking at this uh, gaming, let me play a small clip. Uh, this is an actual, you know, GTA type. This 10 11. And Raj, don't, don't escape. Hello, sir. I'm Brian with uh, uh, DC Police. You know, I pulled you over today, sir. Nope. I pulled you over for a reckless driving going 15 over the posted speed limit. So, sir, That's may I please, the... sir, may I please have your license, registration, and proof of insurance? Witness an active. And the, well, the okay, reason so I'm Brian, showing now is you can, can you, see we don't the have that much time. You... The rain, the water, the different settings, even training on a traffic stop can be done in a virtual environment. And then uh, on top of that, there's also applications involved. So for instance, I want to show you here, there is an actual application that these gamers use run their name and then you would see all of this you know the postal code this is for the dispatch to all use you'll see their records and you have to run so you have like an enterprise application that these gamers use to track and to p p file in the the police report so they have an application they 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 have that they built that they use in in the gaming world so they would uh, so it's it's like a real world role play so they're doing all the role the license play. plates you'll see the names and everything so that's how the cad works and um, yeah. so it, it does yeah, have this, a this is basically what input form. So it's kind of like a real world. Now, uh, going and what I felt was when I was looking at this uh, gameplay, I said, so th these role playing players, they have a database, they have an you know an enterprise application where all the players can fill in their police report and they can keep track of things and 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 then simulate and play in the real world. Now there's another scene here where these are three friends and they're actually in, in a house walking around and-, and, and I'm just and going play. to show you how Brian is set up. Okay, well, you just stay here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my camera and- Okay, that was just showing the environment, how uh, you can map a house, a real estate agent and uh, you know different entities can be there looking at an open house. Now that's one piece, but there's another one where you can actually have. Uh, you can customize car. your cars. You can do all kinds of uh, role play. It doesn't have to be just cars. It could be cycles. It could be using a CPR uh, and any kind of uh, an aspect. Um, so you can see how now you can do cars. You can do this, but can you build a virtual McDonald's inside 
of the metaverse? Can you build a virtual McDonald's and can you train? Of course, oh, I have and that. You can do that too. All right. If you look um, here, I'll show you a virtual. Uh, this is an actual virtual McDonald's event. Download your. So let me, so here is that environment where you can actually see the player walking in and uh, let's see if I can fast forward a little bit. This is the settings. Just to show you inside of a, of a place where now you can see here cooking and simulated training inside of a, of a, of a, of a restaurant. Okay. So that, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of kind of uh, the different aspects of um, how gaming can be used for training and even for maybe teaching someone to vaccinate, right? Uh, you could do that uh, in the metaverse or somehow, uh, the key here is to have a good physics engine to make sure that there is feedback and there is other role play that's happening in, in the situation. Okay, so that's kind of giving you a broader perspective. And later on, we're going to talk about uh, NFTs, cryptocurrency, and how uh, that fit in uh, to all their, uh, called Ken Brulia and Ashok. They both are into filmmaking. And Ashok's brother is a, is a, is a big actor and his son, uh, his, uh, another brother is a big uh, musician. So for them to be in that space where the the movie making and filmmaking, if we were to take that into the metaverse and the actors are virtual, and if you're watching a movie and if you go into the movie, you can upload your avatar into the movie. So you would be an actor in the movie. So it would essentially morph all your actions to the, the skeletal action in the movie. So you are now now seeing a very different way with, with machine learning and with all the GANs, it seems like even actors and, and filmmaking is going to go through a, a big evolution, right? And what, what uh, how does that work, right? If, if we have a metaverse and there's multiple people making the movie, how the, the commerce of it, the production, the distribution, and the, the value of the actor is very high. The actor is valued the most. So now if you democratize that, do, we, do, do the actors and musicians kind of lose their competitive advantage? Does, does creativity become a collaborative thing? And that's a very interesting uh, idea. So I wanted to just kind of hear from uh, Ashok what he thinks and then, uh, and Ken, you can chime in. Just you, you guys have very less time because this is not a very big topic we wanted to cover, but we wanted to hear your vision. Go ahead, Ashok. Sure, you're able to hear me? Yes, we're able to hear you. Go ahead, Ashok. Hey, uh, thank you, first of all. Um, this is wonderful for sure. The metaverse is actually going to change everything, not only the um, um, sudden industry, all the industry um, um, for sure. Um, so if you if you go back as a human, we always wanted to transport uh, from one place to another place, not only now, all the way, either in the form of spirituality or in the form of intellectual. The quest was there all the time. So this metaverse is the platform gives that way to express your imagination in any form. Twitter did it in the words, Facebook did it in the video and words, YouTube did it in the video, metaverse giving the holistic view, right? So that's, that's the biggest advantage Metaverse is going to bring it. Imagination, go wild, it's a platform. To answer your question, how it's going to change the movie, I didn't give it a thought because it's going to be a very short presentation, but I'm telling you from the time I heard of the Metaverse, think one thing, we talked about all the time, no two person ever read the same book, Edmund Wilson, right? Everybody reads the book, same line, but they mean it differently. They interpret it differently, right? Similarly, um, one movie is made by the director, but the same movie is watched by million or billion directors because every spectator looks at it and he has a different emotion. He has a different dialogue for the particular scene, but there is no platform gives them to create their own scene today. They have to watch what James Cameron gives to them, but not everyone could do what James Cameron does, right? So in the metaverse, like a virtual actor, what I'm thinking, my prophecy is like, no two ever person going to watch the same movie again. Like for example, karaoke, right? I'll take only one minute and finish up, um, Dr. Alex. 
like karaoke what it did to the music industry template is the same music is original but when it comes everybody can sing their own voice own melody the own emotion own lyrics it changes everything i don't have to copy the original but i have the original as a template in the future i'm thinking when the movie launches in the theater or the online stream there will be an another template like a karaoke there will be another template will be launched for the same movie in the metaverse where all the metaverse players will jump in and play the roles of the same movie content everything theme is the same but the what i am going to say my emotion is my personalized emotion what i am going to say will be a different virtual actor just to give in one quick um thing in my metaverse movie there will not be a bullet there will not be bullets in the gun that shot gandhi i will introduce a new virtual actor to go and remove the bullet for me i would change the climax the way i feel like in my movie there will not be a room number 306 in lorain motel where mr dr king assassinated i would change the history may not impact but i can create my own climax just for um, comical way in my metaverse movie there will not be a place where J- jack will go into the sea i will look at the rose and say rose you can do better than that i'm going to throw another wood piece to the jack and i'm going to save him in the titanic movie i'm not going to let what james cameron decide the climax right so look at the ways possibility right so i'm i'm my prophecy is no two person going to watch the same movie again they are going to create the movies with a template like karaoke for the movies it's going to be the big 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 uh, thing in the in, in the industry um, in the entertainment industry uh, that's I what i think Yeah, sure. I think that's a great prophecy, and uh, what you mentioned has some kind of complexity. Doctor J can step in because if you change a documentary, let's say this is going to happen, that there is a documentary, there is something that happened, but now that it has been fabricated, so we have to put protection around uh, movie entertainment content versus real content, so the fake news and the fake. does not seep into the uh, into this system so we're going to talk about that later on because we have another speaker coming but you started out something that we would want to think about as we as we think about doing these uh, different perspectives what what is the, the 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 fact what is the reality what is the truth that that is a question of the century right uh, so maybe we can bring you on later today at the end and then uh, work with you as show just to have you and dr j debate out some of these details um and dr uh, rajput so sorry to uh, take in a little bit of your time uh, ken and i what we will do ken is uh, in the middle of the next session we will talk about uh, how to do ab testing and 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 uh, what we call uh, film uh, you know when they do a fest film fest making small movies and testing it out right how can we test something in the metaverse uh before you make something right so uh, using the 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 metaverse as a film fest and and an ab testing to make sure that general audience like it and and to kind of vote on it and maybe even crowdsource and fund it so those are the things can we will cover uh, right after uh, dr rajput's presentation and ashok i'll reach out to you offline to see if you can come back later on to talk about the ethical ramifications of your uh, prophecy okay great thank you and dr thank rajput you. its uh, presentation is all yours um you have 30 minutes and you can take as long as you want or a little less time and then we can all debate thank you and please uh, continue sir thank you so much very very good evening uh, to all the people who are listening and thank you dr alex for setting the context very happy to listen uh, mr prasanna the way movie and i was very excited that yes everybody can make their own movie so now i'm coming back because i am basically from a pharmaceutical industry we talk about the healthcare and the healthcare in the metaverse is you know that we all have spoken it's we the mix of vr augmented and the actual reality that is the thing is there so what is what is actually the metaverse is which is there which we are talking about it it's is means a bit like having a discussion about the internet which we started in 1970 right 
and it's a combination of the multiple elements of the technology including the virtual reality augmented reality where users live with the digital universe so this is the basic thing is there and it is applicable in the different type of the industry the people they are using it to build the things and it is going to be a way of life in the coming time so now how healthcare industry is going to take care for the future part because let us i was remembering that what the mark zuckerberg on the october 28 21 in this year only that the facebook would become a entity called the meta right this is the word which he has given because he want that the facebook instead of writing chatting and all people should be interacting like i am interacting with dr alex here so putting the things and i can feel him and i can feel other people out there so that is triggered an immediate interest about the possibilities of the inclusion in healthcare industry in such beautiful ecosystem so that was the one thing which is started so at this stage most of the people in the technological world because i am hearing the people from the technological world they are about about the metaverse and they know understand that how it can make and make the things happen in a beautiful way so it is not the 3d internet but it is actually the meta which is make going to make a difference so by shifting the facebook from a social networking service towards a social technology company the wages tends to enlarge the business perimeter while placing the connectivity feature of the service as a holistic which will inexorably include a wide array of the services from the communication to the retail to the working station leisure and entertainment and also in the healthcare industry which is very very important so now medical learning and the training the 360 degree view so i'll talk about that part because why vr is used in the training of the doctors and medical staff to take the learners within the human body providing a 360 view of the elements of replicating the real world procedure so earlier people they used to do the dissection they used to see and all but with this a person who is doing the training the doctors the paramedical the staff and all they can visualize the entire things beautifully they can they, they can't touch it but they can feel it right so that is the beauty of the thing which is going to happen and 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 earlier what we used to happen i'm talking about the india per se that if there is a, one of the dead bodies then people they want to do the dissection and all but with this they will multiple people they can go and they can see the different thing it is not the one person is taking care for the heart one person taking care for the kidney one person is going to take care for the gall this is this depends upon how the student they want to do the things and a 60 student 70 student 100 student with this technology they can use utilize it together simultaneously learn anatomy physiology which is basically required so the medical schools are also beginning to incorporate ar into the curriculum very soon to provide the student with the valuable opportunities on hands on learning earlier it was a hands on training but now it is going to change to the hands on learning part and ar programs are used to stimulate the patient and the surgical encounters which is always going to allowing the student to visualize and practice the new techniques and again re understand the things so wherever there is a mistake there will not be a mistake it will be a learning again and again so the person will going to be very clear that yes what are the things are there with this beautiful technique the person will able to understand it well and further impressively experiences could be recreated and real surgeries where the student will sense and the student will feel the replayed the real surgery as they are the surgeon themselves so they are not they they feel that they are doing the surgery and at the same time there is no mistake is going to happen they will be able to learn the thing so this is the medical learning which is going to help in the industry for the healthcare part and believe you me it is not inconceivable that the metaverse could also become the first training ground for the next generation of the surgical robots where via artificial intelligence which we are talking right and surgical robots would learn how to operate surgery on humans so see how metaverse is going to change the human was using robots and now robots will be trained with the metaverse to how to do the surgery so this is a paradigm shift is going to happen and this will be a thing which is going to be there in this particular decade and i am sure by 2025 it will be a real way of making the things happen 
this is on the medical learning part, which is a 360 completely change in the entire part. Second thing I like to see about the surgical procedures and the pre post surgery assessment. So what people they used to have do earlier, they used to put the things and then the surgery used to happen. But while building on the existing use of the surgical robots, which I'm talking in my area, more complicated surgeries are said to make increasing use of AR. Because when we are using this AR, accuracy will be 100%. Right place, right part, the things will be taken care. Suppose there's a nodule is there and you have to have an invasive surgery. With this, you will go deep there and you'll be able to take it out. So there will be zero error is going to happen. The potential application range from the river of the can serious tumors to the performing complicated spinal surgery, which is one of the very, very important surgery, which is uh, basically a risk of life and death. And these development will further enhance the surgical precision and flexibility for the complex procedures. Because these are the procedures which require very, very clear cut accuracy, right? No error in that. You will agree with me, doctor. And already AR is providing the surgical staff with the new ways of accessing information that is more complete, compatible with the surgical workflow and the sterile field of operating the rooms. So you'll see it is not the patient, it is not the doctor, it is not the healthcare staff. The entire gamut is going to help to take the beautification of this thing where 100% the efficacy and efficiency will be there with this. And the, with this, the navigation systems and the fusion of the data from the multiple imaging sources will be available where a healthcare person, a healthcare industry person, a doctor, a healthcare giver will be able to go directly without any other distraction part. Third point I like to add here, which I was just putting the thing, that the pre-surgery and the post-surgery assessment can also be benefited. You will agree with me, Dr. Peter, that it is always good to have the pre-surgery part, right? And once the as, as a clinician, he or she is going to finish it, then the post-surgery assessments are equally important, yes. right? Okay. How, the, how the progress is happening, right? What the prognosis was there and how the progress is. So it is a blend of prognosis and prognosis put together. And then the, it will be have the intervention routine in the data analytics. And you'll agree with me today, we are talking that with such type of things, data is a new oil. And with the data and the technology, which is a God, which is there with this metaverse, which is going to make a lot of difference. So the efficacy will be increased, accuracy will be there, and the time limit will be decreased. So efficacy, accuracy will be taken care and the time limitation will be uh, less and the patient will be getting a better benefit, better benefit and right things will be given. So accuracy is the most important part in the post-operative surgery. This I'm talking about the surgeons per se, which is yeah. basically required, right, doctor? Yeah. Now I will talk about another part which you have shown me that uh, in the earlier video that how the wellness is going to take, how the people they are there, they had gone to the finding out the McDonald's shop and finding the things and all, all these things are there. So here I'll talk about the wellness, fitness and the quality of the life. So you talk about the doctor about the gamification. I'll say that yes, using the game mechanics is a non-gain environment. We are, you are talking about the, how your daughter was showing this and holding the things and all. So this is the way it offers a new ways to connect the healthcare provider and the patient together. Because, because it is going to use the scenario is largely restricted to the wellness and the fitness portfolio because these apps will be available there. So the patient or the person will love to be there as a part of that. Otherwise, when you start instructing to the patient to go for the, some fitness part or some wellness part, patient is in the mundane part of it. But with this gamification, right, the patient will start enjoying the thing. Suppose I'm sitting in India. I want to have a walk, a stroll at the London street. I like to say hi to the giant wheel. I like to see the thing. So I'll be able to enjoy that part, right? So this is the beautification which is going to make the thing. And then the quality of the life will be much better. So it is also been shown that the VR can all help improve the quality of the life of the people with dementia. Why I'm talking about a dementia? Because it's very, very important. Doctor, you will agree with me that with this COVID, that most of the people, they had a mental problem. Most of the people, they have suffered. But with this part, they will be able to interact 
and with this they will be able to see that yes somebody is talking to them somebody is interacting with them so they can visualize and they can get the answer so they will feel that happiness feeling will be there which is again a very very important part because then only when a person talks to somebody person feel that somebody is taking care for their emotions responding them they are feeling that yes they want to be in the garden they are not in the garden they can see that yes they are roaming in the garden they are talking to somebody with things this is the way this this better verse is going to help to such type of pain suppose they want to go to the cathedral they want to go to the sandy beach they want to go to the dubai to the burj al khalifa right so they like to enjoy that yes they are roaming about it so after the 16 monitor session the researchers they found that the patients were better able to retrieve the old memories which were improved the mood and elevated the mood to provide the positive mental stimulation wow. because researchers has seen sir and researchers they found it that when you provide such a beautiful environment in a very positive way where the people and the patient they have missed in the past they will again regain the things and the nice memories are going to help them to recope up and then from a particular mental disablement or when the people they are feeling that they are in the bad mood they will come on the positive mood and that the feeling of depression will go and this is going to help a lot so without any person involved in that this metaverse is going to help them the people will be coming out from that depression part coming out from the societal tendency coming out in a negative part and all so all these things are there thus it really improves the quality of the life which is really required because as a healthcare professional while motivating the patient while encouraging the patient and also building their mental health to avoid overthinking because overthinking is one of the cause you will agree with me so the holographic effect will help for the better precision and assessment to build a robust communication with them because that is also required for a mentally retarded person you will agree with me doctor absolutely so, and 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 your energy and the passion that you bring and the the real world practical application of the metaverse just in this one field is worth all the effort you know it's all worth all the effort and and uh dr j uh would you jump in and 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 uh kind of provide your feedback and then i'll go ahead go ahead dr j um greetings dr rajput first and foremost it's a pleasure to Thank meet you, you um technologically hope to meet you in person i read a lot about you and uh, it's my pleasure um Dr. Raj put this is at the center of the fold of mentality metaverse that which is speaking about where everything from uh, individuals that are mentally impaired and other uh use cases that involve aiding and assisting individuals in the real world uh with the men mentality metaverse and i really uh you you said it all you said it all and i really appreciate it Thank you. Sir. Thank you. And sir. Uh, the, the the some of the prophecies you've made and some of the uh, the the perspective from a surgeon and how this is going to work out um the the challenge would be the legal ramifications and existing preset paradoxes is hard to change the mindset uh yes. and also the the fear the fear is important right accuracy if you don't get accuracy you cannot reduce the fear accuracy and consistency is important uh and a lack of broadband or or having uncertainty about certain technology for instance when uh the cars first came out when the telephones first came out when the electricity they called it the ghost so <laughs> when when you have these unknown very complex systems that come out it requires time for 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 adoption but as we are evolving the time for adoption is decreasing right and the pandemic has just made it even more closer so but but life and death right and 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 a surgery that is a very comp, you know the very that's one of the that's the end right life so you are you're you're going to have a very hard time convincing someone even though there's a human on the edge uh physician or technician right and then there is someone on the remote side doing the surgery let's say we have a robot on this end uh, in this in the operating room and the robot is designed if the internet drops within 10 minutes 
it's going to stitch everything back together temporarily and, and sustain life until the doctor comes back again. Yes. Right. And then yes. they open it up again and they do the surgery. So this edge intelligence, right? How to make it decentralized at the same time distributed, but distributed close by so that you have two surgeons with yes. different networks in the same place. So what happens if one surgeon drops off like a co-pilot on a plane, mm -hmm. right? A co-pilot model. Um, we, we have to have backup of a backup of a backup, right? It, this is a very complicated uh, space, but it, the way you're talking and the way you're presenting this, it seems that we can do that. It's, yes. it's, co it's not only cost-effective, it's also productive and more reliable when two surgeons can do a procedure together and counter each other and kind of check and balance each other. There's a, and then there's a third person and that's artificial intelligence. So you have real, yeah. virtual and yeah. artificial. So you are about, you're controlling and, and managing that risk in that fashion. So um, I think policies, government agencies have to get involved. And I'm sure this is a beginning for you to start lobbying, start talking about uh, virtual vaccines. How do we administer yeah. vaccines uh, by someone who's just trained, but there is somebody watching? What if they are going to faint? What if they have a reaction? How do you handle that? So, uh, yes, it's exciting. And that your passion and the way you, you really projected it, we feel that you can drive that and you can bring it to fruition. It's always the trailblazers. It's going to be the hard, yeah. you're going to have the hardest journey because it's that, that's the nature of an, an inventor and someone who's an early adopter. You're going to have a hard time. And uh, we would love to help you. We'd love to give you platforms uh, and figure out how, you know, we can, we can support uh, your, uh, your mission. So thank you uh, for your time and your passion. I know it's very late. You have to go to bed and uh, wish you a good night. Thank you for joining and we will catch up in the morning. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. It was nice talking to you, nice understanding. But there's a lot many things are there which has to be understood. A lot many things are there. And you know, this, uh, this healthcare industry, it is, it is an industry which takes little time because there's a challenges are also there. To embrace the things that really requires something time and, and making the people to convince on the thing. But we also know what you said, then the electricity has come, people decide about the ghost has come and all. So this is a basic thing, which is going to be a part and parcel of the life. And we all are aware about it, that uh, the basic thing is the accepting and implementing, emerging the technology, which is, which is very, very important. And interoperability, portability, stakeholder, customization, human factor, the skills, resistance, mistrust, cyber attack, legislatory and regulatory. These are the challenges which is going to happen. But at the same time, when they see that other side of it, it is not dark. It is always a brighter side. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much again and good night. Thank you. Good night, sir. Bye-bye. All right. So now that we have uh, concluded the first session, uh, we have uh, some time uh, for... Uh, Mr. Ashok and Ken Brulia to kind of debate on what we left off uh, right before this, which is uh, filmmaking in the metaverse. It's a given. That is going to be a big, big market. Netflix, uh, Hunger Games, uh, the Squid Games. There's so many different games that are being created from shows. And uh, looking at the metaverse, it seems like a perfect flat platform for filmmakers, creative artists, and everyone else to come in and start making their content. Um, so first I'd like to see if Ken, uh, what is your thought on like film fests going on the metaverse? And just in general, what do you think uh, for, for the creative people, uh, how does this, uh, this metaverse fit in? And then Ashok, uh, right after that, you can jump in and let's kind of have, uh, you know, kind of put a closure to your, uh, your thought process. I know you were in a little hurry, so I thought you, you could come and bring some closure in. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Ken. So what we, we can do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, Ken is uh, in another uh, meeting. So I, he's texting me the questions and then I'll work with uh, Ashok uh, to work on that. So uh, Ashok, uh, are you on? 
Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, perfect. Alex. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, it was so engaging and we got enough feedback that we have to bring you back because uh, it resonated with everyone with the concept of the karaoke, how you connected the metaverse to the karaoke. And uh, some of them have questions about licensing and royalty payment. One of the questions, Ashok, is uh, artists and people put a lot of content out there on the internet and the creator does not get any royalty. And the, 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 the families of the, the painter, it sells for millions of dollars, but the families don't see any, any, any of those shares going to them. So how do you see the, the, the royalty payments and the, 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 the way that when you put something out there, uh, do you think something related to the NFT or coins or, yes. go ahead Ashok, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, um, the royalty protection in the entertainment world uh, was a worry um, maybe 10 years back, a decade back or even more than that. But once the YouTube and all the medium started um, rejecting the copies or the clones of the original one, it started getting strengthening. Um, even, you know, my brothers in back in India, in the movie industry, their royalty started coming present uh, in the, only in the dream app and only 20 years back. So I, with the going forward with the metaverse, um, the way NFT, the original um, uh, player, the original creator, um, he's there in the in the blockchain throughout. Um, even if it crosses millions of hands, the NFT can go from one person to another person. So now we have the technology to find out who is that original creator. So it's not going to get lost. The same thing when we do it in the movie industry. You talked about licensing. I agree with you. The one concern um, about um, the, the creating the documentaries, the different results, that's something different. We can talk about it later. But overall, the, the Disney going to create um, uh, one template for the metaverse, which is going to be like a karaoke system, they're going to license it, their meta mart. If I wanted to create my own movie, I would like buy it like how I buy it in app store today and get that James Cameron's new Avatar 8 movie, um, the, like a karaoke version. But I would, uh, I would employ or I would have my friends and family act in the characters that I want. And I will have my own dialogues. I will have my own emotions. The story might be the same. The story could be talking the social justice or romance, but that's how it um, spoke in US is so different how it spoke in India, how it spoke in Africa. Everywhere the theme is the same, but the language and emotion, the expression is different. Now the one movie could take multiple versions without licensing problem, everything comes back to Disney because they are the original creator of the template. So they get benefited even if I copy thousand times and thousand movies on out of it. So I don't think so licensing, actually it's companies would love it. Everybody um, cried about it when Netflix came, the movie theaters and everybody, but now everything becomes the income stream. Um, so everything like going to change. Um, oh, that's sure. my thought. One, one question, a follow up uh, from one of the uh, viewers is um, uh, a little tricky. They're, they're asking, how does, uh, if you put it in a blockchain, right? How do you make it so that uh, it's object oriented? So there is an inheritance. So uh, James Cameron gets the bigger chunk. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I, we may not be able to answer. I'll just ask you what he's asking. Maybe we can answer it here. Is he's a, if James Cameron owns 90%, right? Now you have inherited it and you're modifying it, right? So you, mm. he sets a price for inheritance. So you only get one or two percent for your creation because you're using his IP. So when I purchase that your movie, he gets ninety percent royalty, and you get whatever percentage you put. And so this distribution and encumbrance, right, of um, the thing, the current NFTs. Uh, do not support this inheritance, right? Because it's a it's a blockchain, yeah. one going another and another. Um, I think that's a technical question, but he, he's saying, do you? How do you, as a creator, see that that distribution happening? Do we create another currency, uh, or or do we connect with the main blockchain? You know, they're a little confused about how that works. Go ahead, Ashok. Yeah. We don't have, um, you're right. I think the viewer who asked the question is very right. We don't have the way to connect to the parent as of now. 
but I think we never had this even five years back, 10 years back. So we are thinking about five years from now, we are not going to ask this question, definitely. There will be a way to address this. Uh, yeah, to answer that question, currently we don't have, but I think there are many models currently available where people would work and under creativity and then rebrand it or redo it. So that concept is not something uh, different. The royalty based work, everything works like that. So I, I'm seeing it like um, a, comp a composer composed the music and he launches it. Now I'm a, I'm a stage singer, I'm singing it. I'm just using my own modulation, may not be exactly mimicking what original creator created it. I just pay the royalty to him, but I don't, um, everybody knows that's my song. <laughs> because I didn't sing exactly what the original singer did. So that's my inner it, vision. Okay, good. So again, uh, there is this Ethereum contract, right? A blockchain contract where you can have these revenue shares put in and, and these NFTs. Uh, one of the, the key uh, goals of uh, protecting creative people is to make sure they get paid for their work because they often don't get paid for their work. So, and then it, it, it says, uh, you know, and then that's where uh, authenticating your content, putting it in the metaverse and saying, this is my content. And if you're consuming it, there is a certain amount of royalty if you're consuming it for commercial purposes or if you're streaming it for other purposes. So that, that, that is the, uh, that was the, the question. And again, there is another question about who owns the metaverse uh, is like Netflix, you know, somebody's going to take a bigger chunk of my royalty can that be decentralized and decoupled so that no one company owns that content? I can move it to different platforms without having to be locked in. So those are the things they, they wanted kind of for you to think about when you build your platform is to create a more decentralized and give the freedom uh, to the creator. At this time, the, the creators have no freedom. They're, they're stuck with a production company. They're stuck with a music company. They can't move around and they cannot mix and, and match. They cannot mix and match and make something bigger because the, the, comp the record companies restrict them from doing that. So they're hoping in this new platform, that's, it's much more open, much more like software, open source, you know, open, uh, but you still have to pay a royalty if it's used for commercial purposes. So they want to kind of have you look at like Apache, and then try to think of like similar to software, how can you make an open source? The reason I'm asking you that question is because you are into software as well. So you understand both, uh, you know, how open source and, and Apache software and the filmmaking industry. And is there a convergence? Do you see collaborative movies being made with actors from different parts of the world coming together in the metaverse and then manifesting something? And then somebody else looks at your, MV minimum viable cartoon type uh, 3D interface and creates an actual movie in another place, but you and your team get the fair share as it's meant to be. Yeah. Right, a lot need to be done in the licensing and distribution for sure. But as a technology, like you said, it opens the platform, like I said earlier, um, imagination now can be expressed in a platform, which is not the case until today. Now, now the, whatever Jim Carrey does, Ashok Ratinam, Ashok uh, Ken Burlia can do it from his home, right? He can take and transport his um, thoughts into that character and then make it um, collaborative and then add a personalized. So that is the key I'm more fascinated about Metaverse. We don't have that such platform now today for the movie making. It's one guy makes it, everybody only watches it. I may have an opinion, but there is no way I can uh, create my own thoughts into that particular character and show it. I, I'm fascinated by that. Definitely there are challenges um, in terms of technology, how it's going to make it. I, I'm sure it's going to evolve way better. If we, if we, we talk all the time, um, Alex, if you remember, um, everything in the past, like even in Indian epics, we used to uh, read or see, read about the, the, the flying birds and read about the guy who's sitting in the king's next to king and explaining what's happening in the battlefield. There was a live stream. Skype is happening thousands of years back. It's only imagination. So to me, imagination creates it, technology confirms it uh, years after. So what you talk today is, uh, is, is uh, this platform opens up that imagination all of them may not happen today, but the technology will conform and make it live even down the line. This has the potential to make that everything possible 
to create your own movie, to create your own characters, um, the, everything under the same thing, but it's all different. It's same, right. but different. Different, perfect. And so uh, the, the final question, this is what we've been all waiting for, is uh, real, virtual, and artificial. The real is what event actually happened and how to protect the real, the integrity of the real video so that it does not get fabricated using computer graphics and, and or it does not get edited to just show that one word and make you feel like, uh, you know, you said something else out of context, out of context. So how do you protect the integrity of that? Let's just call it in this context, a video footage. How do you protect the integrity of the video footage? Where do you start? Where do you stop? And how do you protect it so that it does not get uh, corrupted uh, in this in this uh, metaverse, and that, that's the last question. For you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's not the last question for me. It's going to be the last question for a guy who comes after after a billion years. Um, this is going to be a problem that I think it's not going to be solved right away. Or to be very honest, none of the technologies would come up. We can even talk about it, put a different kind of a shades or different kind of a thing. Um, if that is something not possible uh, with the human, when there are five human, there are five hundred thoughts. There are five million thoughts. The same information can be converted into different forms, and there will be people to listen to each one of the um, theories too. So it's it's that's where the um, we we as a Homo sapiens survived because of that gossiping. <laughs> so that is there in the DNA. Um, there will be a fake versus new story or new content fight throughout the life um, as long as the human kind is there. It is um, something a problem to to. I, I, I sure, you, you, it is a serious problem, right? History, like we talk about cancel culture and you know history, there are so many different uh, concepts. It's sometimes someone with more power can go and modify history, right? Mm -hmm. But then everybody watching it, young children watching it, they see a different version of the history, right? Yes, it is somebody's perspective. I agree, the, the, the creation of filmmaking and, and, and that itself is somebody's perspective, but is there a real, there's always my perspective, your perspective and actually what happened. How do we preserve the actually what happened? Um, if, if you look back the history, now we may be able to find out uh, what is right, but if you look back thousand years back, now the today's event, who is going to authenticate? Right, there are seven billion, eight billion people today. There, nobody is going to live um, um, uh, centuries after that. So it's it's not only the technology going to authenticate. Like you said, everybody has the perspective. Until today, a, a powerful person is only has a way to rewrite the history. But with the metaverse, every seven billion people can share the perspective. The collective consciousness of that seven billion people now can be found in one single place a decentralized place. Now, the future generation, up to their discussion to decide of looking at the collective consciousness are all of the content, not just one person who power created it. That's why I think uh, decentralizing it, democratizing it, the, the way to express your feelings will have more ways for the people to think and figure it out on their own, right? How many of the um, history that we read today, um, do you, if we think through, we may not agree. It may be rewritten by somebody uh, hundreds and hundreds years back. So, but if you see a more collective consciousness running towards one theme, that I think this is not technological solution. This is more like a psychological solution, but the metaverse provides that um, the ability with the different thoughts sitting around there for the viewers to decide. And, and I think that that's why we, you know, listening to you, you have a very broad perspective on this topic. And Dr. J uh, is going to go ask you, uh, you know, kind of close up this conversation and kind of talk to you about uh, what you just told us, because you made us think in a very different direction uh, than traditionally we're thinking, oh yeah, this is straightforward, but it is not a straightforward, uh, there is no straightforward solution. The, the perspectives are different and the narratives are different. And what's fake and what's real is really a matter of perspective. So Dr. J, can you shed some light and, and uh, you know, do a closing for uh, Dr. Ashok? Thank you. I'm not Dr. Ashok yet. <laughs> not Dr. Ashok. 
<laughs> Ashok, thank you so much for uh, the beautiful presentation and very, very informative and the valuable information. We appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. J. Quite welcome. Um, Ashok, um, in light of August 2021, Anthony Hopkins starred in the first uh, full feature film in, in NFT format. Do you see that as a uh, threshold or opening for uh, a full full features in uh, the metaverse? I think so. Um, I was like, um, um, had, I had a similar conversation with Dr. Alex a um, long time back. The Netflix should have been started by the Blackbuster. The uh -huh. electric vehicle should have been started by the British Petroleum, right? Yeah. If those guys don't start it, somebody would, I would expect a um, first NFT film to come from a Disney or Universal Studios, not yeah. from Anthony Hopkins, very honestly speaking. Somebody yeah. else is going to come, and like you said yesterday, if you don't ready to catch up, they're going to run over. So I think Anthony Hopkins is going to run over Disney if they're not going to wake up. Exactly, exactly, yes. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, yeah. uh, it's every so about... I think you opened up a big space, and I think the more you can evangelize for uh, up-and-coming filmmakers, new filmmakers, new entrepreneurs, new startups who are trying to make a film. Making a film is like running a startup. If you think about it, exactly. it's a lot of work. So, if you think that the metaverse is something that can be evangelized, we would, uh, you know, request you to start doing more outreach and start building a platform around that. And that would be great. So thank you, Ashok, for your uh, time and your uh, prophecy and your vision. Thank you, Dr. J. Dr. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so great. Uh, now we are going to go ahead and uh, take a quick pause for about five minutes. And then we are going to go ahead and uh, go with our next speaker. And this is again, interesting. Uh, blockchain and artificial intelligence in the metaverse. Uh, I think that's a, is a very deep topic. This is a from a professor. So we're going to um, uh, listen to it from a lecture style. Uh, and there's going to be some uh, common terminologies at the same time. There may be some terminology you may not uh, grasp immediately. So please, after the, the, the speech, we will go ahead and start talking about. Great. Welcome back, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started with our next uh, presentation. Dr. Sisha, go ahead. Hi. Welcome, all of you, to my presentation on artificial intelligence and data you, science. Today, the agenda is, after giving a brief introduction, um, the definition of artificial intelligence data science, and where all these new technologies leading to have a fourth industrial revolution, and it's followed by conclusion and references. What is artificial intelligence? It is a wide ranging branch of computer science for building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. For example, even kids are used to Siri, Alexa, and other smart assistants. And we are seeing self-driving cars, robo advisors, con uh, conversational bots, email spam filters, Netflix recommendations to name the few. Coming to data science, uh, it combines multiple fields, including statistics, applied mathematics, artificial intelligence, and data mining or machine learning techniques to extract value from data. It also reveals trends in the data and produces insights that business can use to make better decisions and maybe to create more innovative products and services. For example, an international bank creating a mobile app offering on-the-spot decisions to loan applicants using machine learning powered credit risk models and a hybrid cloud computing architecture that is both powerful and secure. Uh, or maybe an industry developing ultra powerful 3D printed sensors 
that will guide tomorrow's driverless vehicles. Uh, the solution actually relies on data science and analytic tools to enhance its real-time object detection capabilities. The Department of Defense's A strategy defines artificial intelligence and machine learning as the ability of machines to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. AI enables human to make educated decisions by parsing through information and del delivering relevant data at mission speed. Coming to law enforcement, an urban police department created statistical incident analysis tools to help officers understand when and where to deploy resources in order to prevent crime. All these technical innovations along with other technologies are leading to fourth in the industrial revolution. That's what the recent um, study by the World Economic Forum reports. Um, and one third of the most important skill sets in 2025 uh, will be comprised of technology skills, not yet considered imperative to a job today. So by looking at some of the technologies that will transform the global economy by 2025 are mobile internet, artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality, cloud technology, internet of things, advanced robotics, biometric technology, 3D printing, genomics, and blockchain to name uh, some of them. What is mobile internet? We know that interfaces, formats, sensors, and apps will evolve as mobile computing devices dominate internet connectivity. By the expectation is that by 2025, mobile connectivity uh, could be accessed by an additional 4.3 billion people. Coming to artificial in intelligence, machine learning and user interfaces such as speech, face and gesture recognition technologies will increase productivity or eliminate some knowledge work altogether. So what is trying to mention is instead of people, technology will take over uh, the work. Virtual and augmented reality. Research shows early adopters of uh, AR will have a competitive advantage. Uh, augmented reality solutions alleviate the pressures to increase productivity, create new return on investments, and find scalable competitive differentiators. Another one is cloud technology. As we are seeing, Nearly all IT services and um, web apps could be delivered through the cloud with more enterprises using the public cloud as cybersecurity improves. Then comes Internet of Things. More than 9 billion devices are currently connected to the Internet. This number is estimated to grow between 50 billion to nearly 1 trillion in the next decade. All organizations will be monitoring, uh, securing their products, systems, devices, and even people. Coming to advanced robotics, it advances uh, in art with the help of artificial intelligence, machine vision, sensors, 
motors, hydraulics, and materials will change the way products and services are delivered. A surge in tech talent for building, operating, and maintaining advanced robots will occur. Biometric technology. We know that this is well used in almost all secured um, locations. A recent survey of security professionals revealed that 72% of companies are planning to draw the traditional passwords by 2025. Uh, this will give rise to new authorization services for face, voice, eye, hand, and signature identification. Genomics, genetic engineering technology will grow with faster computer processing speeds, DNA sequencing technologies, and advanced analytics will improve agricultural production, reduce reliance on fossil fuels, extend uh, human life ex expectancy. The last one uh, that I would like to say is about blockchain. This is the best known uh, technology in the context of virtual currency, Bitcoin. But a recent report showed 64 different use cases of blockchain across 200 companies have been identified. Uh, they are streamlined. Um, a secure contracting and transaction will drive commercial use. The success is highly dependent on the collaboration in an emerging ecosystem, primarily driven by innovation in the insurance technology and financial tech industry. Organizations can unlock the value of blockchain through a deliberate five-step journey. First is education, identifying strategy, solution design, implementation, and what kind of approach they want. Enabling collaboration, shaping a positive regulatory environment, and identifying clear business cases, justifying the transition costs will pose a, the biggest challenges for the implementation. Uh, as a conclusion, with all these technological uh, insurgents, um, if we consider the military, this is by not of uh, Grumman, uh, they are focusing on secure AI application, internet of military things. Um, uh, joint all domain command and control, uh, or JDC2, seeks to connect communication nodes, shooters, and platforms across all domains and branches of the military. In this environment, cyber secure, integrated, open architecture communication capabilities are critical. Um, another one, AI, space, JADC2, advanced battery management systems, future vertical lift, so uh, focusing on this, they are developing and integrating leading edge artificial intelligence and machine learning solutions into large, complex end-to-end -end mission systems that are essential to the national security. Another um, important thing is quantum computing. The application and adoption of quantum computing is unclear, but the technology is moving beyond the hype. Google's quantum AI laboratory predicts that small quantum technologies 
will be commercially available in five years and will help business increase revenue, reduce costs, and lower investments in infrastructure. Technology changes by 2025, again proposed by World Economic Forum. Um, AI optimized manufacturing, a new era of computing using quantum computing, then uh, ev everywhere in retail robotics will be used, a blurring of physical and virtual spaces in the sense it is not only just for work purposes, but for building real emotional connections. In the next few years, we can expect to see this progress accelerate with AI technology built to connect people at a human level and drive them closer to each other, even when physically they are apart. The line between the physical space and the virtual will forever be blurred. Another one, putting individuals, not institutions, at the heart of healthcare. By 2025, the lines separating culture, uh, information technology, and health will be blurred. Engineering biology, machine learning, and the sharing economy will establish a framework for decentralizing the healthcare continuum, moving it from institutions to the individual. We know it, know that this is very essential. Propelling this forward are advances in artificial intelligence and new supply chain delivery mechanisms, which require the real-time biological data that engineering biology will deliver as simple, low-cost diagnostic tests to individuals in every corner of the globe. Also, a new era in medicine. Medicine has always been on a quest to gather more knowledge and understanding of human biology for better clinical decision-making. AI is the new tool that will enable us to extract more insights at an unprecedented level from all the medical big data that has never really been fully taken advantage of in the past. It is shift the world of medicine and how it is practiced. Closing the wealth gap. Uh, improvements in AI will finally put access to wealth, cre wealth creation within the reach of the masses. Financial advisors, at this point, we know that they are knowledge workers and uh, they are supposed to be dealing with the wealth management as of now. Um, they do use customized strategies to grow a small nest egg into a larger one. Since wealthy to need to serve and grow your wealth, that's our understanding. As a result, historically, wealth management has been out of reach for those who needed it most. Artificial intelligence is improving at such a speed that strategies employed by these financial advisors will be accessible via technology and therefore affordable for the masses. Then machine learning and AI expedite decarbonization in carbon heavy industries. Over the next five years, carbon-heavy industries will use 
machine learning and AI technology to dramatically reduce their carbon footprint. Technology enabled initiatives were vital to boosting decarbonizing efforts in sectors like transportation and buildings and heavy industries will definitely follow a similar approach. As a result of increasing digital transformation, carbon heavy sectors will be able to utilize advanced technologies like AI and machine learning using real time high fidelity data from billions of connected devices to efficiently and proactively reduce harmful emissions and decrease carbon footprints. Privacy is pervasive. It is not prioritized. By 2025, privacy enhancing technologies or PET technology will be a technology category that will become mainstream. They will be foundational, they will be a foundational element of enterprise privacy and security strategies rather than an added on component integrated only to meet a minimum compliance threshold. While the world will still lack a global privacy standard, organizations will embrace a data-centric approach to security that provides the flexibility uh, necessary to adapt to regional regulations and consumer expectations. These efforts will be led by cross-functional teams representing the data, privacy, and security interests within an organization. Um, in 2025, uh, the workforce in the industry. So the, the McKinsey report suggests employee training as essential. The nature of the work will continue to change and that will require strong education and retraining programs. The World Economic Forum concurs that across nearly all industries, the impact of technological and other changes is shortening the shell life of employees' existing skill sets. So business will need to put talent development and future workforce strategy friend and send up to their, uh, their growth. Firms require a new mindset to meet their talent records. So these are my references and thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shreela. Great. Our, our last presentation for live, and then we're going to augment with a few more presentations, and then we will publish the, the video. Thank you, Dr. Alex. So I, I think uh, one of the speakers might have talked about in pharmaceutical. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't have, uh, able to attend that uh, Dr. Ra uh, Rajput. <clears throat> he, he might have elaborated, you know, the use of uh, this technology in pharma marketing, like not only pharma, but it can be any health healthcare industries. So how will change? So today's marketing uh, with uh, metaphor, right? So one of the, uh, our colleague is working last four year, they have developed the product uh, like on metaphor, uh, met metaverse uh, actually, uh, Communicating with uh, patients, the patients, uh, you know, some patients have psychological problem, depressions, and all. So they are not, uh, they are not willing to go to doctor's office and uh, how to help them. So this uh, meta metaverse uh, will definitely improve. So they can talk, uh, we can check with them out, and they can, uh, you know, open up what is the problem now. So I see that's a huge potential uh, in healthcare industry. 
uh, after like you know treating patients after post surgery uh, scenario keeping eyes on that so somebody is uh, in the uh, in, in in the metaphor uh, metaverse somebody sitting there and uh, communicating with them what to do what to not to do uh, i think it has really a potential uh, uh, applications uh, that what i see thank you that's kind of uh, my th two cents and, and, and Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Barath, uh, since you've been in the, in the pharmaceutical industry, you understand the dynamics and the complexity of going into the hospital, in the operating rooms, selling and medical equipment, being engaged in the process. You're actually in the operating room uh, watching how your uh, product or how device is being used. Um, now, when we look at the metaverse, the bridging the gap between real uh, virtual and artificial is just kind of converging and that that space I, I think ha has some good potential and what um, uh, Dr. Raj spoke about was the medical schools are going to use the metaverse as a training ground and uh, and also he touched on many different areas but that was his main one of the main areas was uh knowledge training, simulator training, and collaborative surgery, having multiple doctors in different locations. And, and one of the things is what if there's no connectivity, if it's decentralized, you could have uh, multiple doctors in local locations, or you could have uh, edge intelligent robot that knows, oh, I lost all my broadband connection. I have an open surgery. How do I stitch everything back together and keep the patient stable until I get the connectivity back, then I can redo that. So, you know, like stop, give them the right uh, medication and then, then continue back forward. So these type of disconnected, pausing, asynchronous type of model is what we discussed. Um, we, and there was another uh, conversation where uh, quantum computing. Yes, sir. The, the, so the quantum computing, if we wanted to experience taste, touch, feel, the current uh, CPU, GPU based solutions, the current architecture may not be ready. The sense of taste requires a much complex model. And so tomorrow when you come in, we're looking forward to hearing about the multi-sensory systems and how quantum computing becomes a necessity, right? We don't implement something until it's need, needed right now. We're, the, the metaverse is pushing the industry forward towards quantum computing because we need all this very high intensive multi-dimensional processing. And so we're looking forward to really tomorrow uh, hearing about the quantum and the metaverse. And that's a really nice uh, place. And also cybersecurity and, and the metaverse. Um, saying that today, that, that was, uh, I, I think that was our goal was to push for ESG. And we, we really push that hard and also to push for copyright royalty, filmmakers and creatives. And uh, Ashok presented a very compelling reason and, 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 and analogies and examples that I think resonated with our audience. There was a lot of questions uh, after Ashok uh, finished his uh, presentation because a form of entertainment versus reality, the news, the documents, the history, the cancel culture, everything kind of just blew up uh, right after that, uh, that conversation because it was, it's such a controversial topic, originality, what is fake, what is real, whose perspective and, and things like that. So uh, with, with quantum, we're hoping you can bring a, a scientific perspective to reality. And, and the problem is whose reality? Right. And, and um, it, it, I think like Asur, Asur was saying, it is a complex problem. Uh, fake news is fake to you and me, not to somebody else, right? And we don't know. The bottom line is it's a very complicated uh, perspective, perspective, the mentality, right? So in closing, Dr. J, uh, if you can just talk about that and then we close today, on this very hard topic of truth. Absolutely. First, let's thank all the speakers that came on today uh, and, and for you hosting, uh, starting with ES, uh, ESG 
and then Dr. Kenneth Huang with ESG, Naveen Yadev with Idea to Investment, Larger Size IP, Yogesh Bhardwaj with the Light Tree. I really like that as well. And Dr. Alex, you came back with gamification. You basically tickled our fancy with a uh, gamification. I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about where that's concerned. Uh, and Dr. Barwat, our ever-present companion here leading the way, we appreciate you so much. And Ashok Prasanna with films, you know, it's a very, very interesting conversation that we have yet to really peel all the layers back, considering NFT, the first movie came out in, in August. And, and that which follows so much with that. And, and Dr. Rajput with, the, with Pharma and the Metaverse. And, and, and of course, Dr. Srila uh, with her very, very uh, great presentation. We thank you all. Um, where the mentality is concerned of what's real, what's not real in these things. And that's why I said uh, a little earlier that at the end of the day, it's physical. Well, I meant the vehicular unit is physical. Uh, we could take the mind anywhere. The mind is the universe, as we spoke about yesterday. And um, the reality that's there, uh, you know, perceptions are very, very important. And, and ultimately, we'll get to speaking about uh, AR, VR, XR, AI, ML, and everything. But there's one thing that's been neglected, and that's... Um, uh, that's my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is the is the mental space, okay? The original computer, the original metaverse, the original uh, physical, uh, the, the vehicular units, physical universe there. It's been neglected. And with that, uh, Dr. Alex and I have spoken about it. Uh, this metaverse will become more of an evolutionary process as we go along. And uh, the more we apply things that will allow us to uh, do things with minimum waste, do things outside of using the physical, the more it'll get to the uh, bottom line, which is the mental. And when it gets there, that's where we come in with what we will call the hyperverse, because you have none of these without the mind, hence mentality metaverse. And there, just like with everything that's going on now, not to cut too deep, that, you know, hey, we're looking for ways to be able to do things outside of ourselves, what's real and what's not, reality, Truth, these things need no melodramatics. They need no pageantry. They need no effects because it stands on its own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> sorry for interrupting you. I think, yeah, yeah I, I really do agree with you. You know, the mind, uh, so far, you know, we can replicate everything, right? You yes. can replicate or produce the mind. So yes. whether this uh, metaverse, if we can, you know, Many people we know, where is the mind, right? We yes. Know, many of you uh, still have no idea where is exactly mind is. Right? Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a not in our brain. It's not in your heart, right? Mind is like, it's, a, it's the cumulative of your whole body. It's, exactly. It's, so in this metaverse world, like there are so many bodies, universal bodies. Yes. And, and their mind, like if we can come up like a, uh, right now, 3D, 4D, like quantum will bring a 4D, uh, what I will call. But yes. there is 16 dimensional, when it's come to the mind, like yes. it's like 16 uh, sensory, like 16 dimensional. It's uh, the square of quantum uh, yes. dimensions. So I think uh, that will open up new uh, the new dimensions and people think that how it will do the you know the mind is for the holistic right it's do always to better thing exactly. it won't harm anything to community nothing will generate in the mind which will impact or hurt anybody right? exactly. so, so that's the uh, that I'm, I'm i'm looking forward and see the scientists and all this industry they come up with the solutions and uh, see the future, uh, see the, the universe, uh, how. So one of the, uh, somewhere I wrote uh, earlier, that I, like 10 years before, 
uh, you know, if cell dies, right, we can regenerate the cells. And mm -hmm. uh, the future, like well, right now, uh, stem cells and all, so you can generate. And if people die, you can uh, you, you you can create like a, a regenerate if you bring into that state. If you bring all the organ and state, uh, this kind of uh, uh, physical state, it's uh, one thing we're missing. We are not uh, knowing the flux. Uh, those people in physical world, physics, they know the flux. If yes. you have the right flux, we have the, all the organs, you can make the life, the person coming into a life. Yes. In the alive state. So in those world, there's no incentive for killing. If I kill somebody, you can regenerate, you can bring it back to him. <laughs> So what would be our universe in that era? Okay. So all those are uh, the very interesting, it's kind of positive things I'm saying, uh, but mind, uh, infected by the mind. So these 16 dimensions uh, and mind, uh, and I, I definitely, your take on mentality, that's, that's the heart of uh, what we want to see uh, from the universe, from the, all the industries, uh, researcher, academia bring something better uh, that uh, help the universe helps the greater good it's so true thank you and uh, touching on the 16 we know that from the myers jung briggs um, uh, exams and things we have the 16 types in the business world as well and um, yesterday clayton banks didn't mention one of his um one of the things that he talked about within uh, his um, what he called predictions you know, his insights, you know, his forecast, I like to say forecast for the Soaring Twenties was that with inside the boardrooms, there will be uh, an AI, a bot, or whatever is sitting there to help uh, the rest of the uh, business teams go through the issues that uh, help move the business along. And he said that the artificial intelligence that must be, uh, encoded with inside of the AI must be such that it is unbiased. Now you have a lot of, uh, a lot of companies working on um, uh, de-bias and things like that, but he said it in 2020 that it must be unbiased so as to think uh, in representation of everybody here. So all of these things, again, lead back to the mind where, you know, we are, uh, we make up uh, the human society. And with that, it is, um, you know, we have all the components we need to uh, make a metaverse and multiverse and hyperverse and things of the sort. So, and the only way it works, it's like the perfect science that you're in, uh, Dr. Barat, it has to add up. And, and the only way it adds up as if it's truthful. Yeah, sure. Thank Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I think uh, so I'm uh, sorry uh, to take uh, <laughs> no, no, thank you, Dr. Barat. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sorry to take a um, few more minutes after the closing statement, Dr. J. This is topic um, Dr. Alex might uh, know that I would appreciate to talk for hours and hours and days. Um, the, the truth, the real truth may not sound like a scientific though, but just one or two minutes, I'll make it short. The mind um, is the one, um, is, the, is primary everything. So that's what I was telling. What we tried was trying to transport ourselves into the universe and merge with that oneness. What we are trying to do, you listen to Oprah, you close your eyes, uh, or you watch a drama or dance, you close your eyes, you just take your mind off and you become oneness with that super force, you call it as mindfulness. If you close your eyes, you keep your eyes open, you call it as that as art. To me, merging with one, taking mind off from you is what the truth is. What we are talking now is taking the mind off from us by creating too many minds around it. It looks like a conflict, right? I just make it um, one analogy and then stop it here. In Indian epics, I used to read um, um, in the spiritual or anything, the mind is what is compared against is uh, we need mind, but mind is the culprit. It creates all the trouble, but we need to kill that mind. To kill that mind, we need still mind. The reason I would say we have the cops in India where we used to burn the bodies after they die, we used to use a stick. 
the, the, the person who burns the body olden days, they used to beat the corpse when it's burning to not to come up or go out of the thing. So they use the stick. The purpose of the stick is to burn the body. At the same time, once that process is done, the stick itself would get burnt. You won't see the stick, but using that stick is what you will burn the body. So similarly to kill the ego, to kill the unlovingness, you need the mind which eventually will destroy itself and then you'll become mindless and mindfulness. So that's 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 what like metaverse when I said it can make all the universe people collect connect mindfulness way and show all their emotion where the mind goes off. You see Oprah everywhere in the metaverse. <laughs> I just stop here. But that's something uh, interesting way to look at mind. Always fascinated about that. Thank you, Asha. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with Asoka. I think. Uh, that's a wonderful. So, I, last I, last thing I will bring here, you know, we are using GPS, right? Everybody's we're happy, right? Yeah. So, even though you take like wrong turn, GPS will never get angry. Stupid, you took wrong turn. This may be take you like ten hour more. Right? Exactly. GPS is not saying, but if we are like sitting to next person like driving, back yeah. to back, <laughs> we'll be immediately angry. <laughs> so, okay, come on. Right, so this uh, metaverse also, like I think, uh, will be tolerance. Right, you know, people might have come with different, you know, arguments and all. I see that a lot of people against of uh, metaverse, uh, saying stop metaverse uh, developing and all. Right, so idea is that we will take negativity. That's that's the uh, this would bring the positiveness, and anything is positive tolerance. It will last long. It will do always better job and helpful. Like I said, GPS, right? So it's a, it's always help. Whatever wrong turn you take, it will try to take you again in the right direction. So that's a, that's kind of my last uh, last word. <laughs> and thank you for wonderful. I think Dr. Alex, Dr. J, and uh, unfortunately I did not hear. Look like very interesting. Asok might have bought uh, the topic, but I'll 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 watch uh, also. And thank you. And and, and thank Dr. you, Dr. Barat. And you know, um, when we when we conclude this uh, this session, when we were discussing, we talked about interspecies communication. As yes. Dr. Doctor, Doctor Jay and I were talking, and I said, "What if I can you know, learn all the dogs barking, right, and and know what the dog wants, and eventually we can have a machine animal translation. So now, when the dog is barking a certain way." it translates the dog bark to human language. And when the human language talks to the animal, the, the translation layer would convert it to a bark. And so it becomes language agnostic communication. So you're talking to not only living organisms, you're talking to you know, many, like we're talking to Siri, we're talking to uh, Alexa. This level of uh, ubiquitous, uh, design uh, and, and having this communication between the plant and human and other things like that with AI and machine learning, that is, it is reality. It, it can happen very quickly. Um, and so in the metaverse, you could talk to a dog, that you could talk to uh, a bird, you could talk because the translation layer exists. So to conclude, we go from real to, vir uh, to virtual to artificial. And all those three coming together provides that holistic experience. And hopefully the web three or the, or the metaverse is the next evolution of the internet in a very decentralized uh, way uh, with a public, um, you know, a public uh, benefit in mind that, that sustainable governance. And, and that's, uh, that's our goal. And that's so our goal. That's our goal. Yes, very, very well put. And just a note to file to all the um, to all the speakers and the listeners that will view uh, once we upload this particular session that um, go to mentality.biz. There's a free session there for everyone who attends the conference called Aggressive Actions for Success. Now that success could be private, it could be in business, 
and it can be within your pursuit of happiness. And that's our gift to everyone that attends here. I wanted, I mentioned it yesterday. We'll mention it a little more because it's there, mentality.biz, aggressive actions for success, whatever success uh, means to the individual. And uh, we're, we're glad to provide it. And we're here to work for the people with mentality.biz.